Hey, what's up? It's Ben from Water Prep, and you know what time it is. It is the CrossFit Open. In fact, this is the second time we're doing this this year. It's the 2020 CrossFit Open, except it's still technically 2019. Who knows what's going on? But all I know is that this video is where you're going to get the best strategy on the internets. So if you want to get your best score possible on CrossFit Open 20.1, this is the place for you. We're going to talk about some scaled stuff. We're going to talk about some master stuff. But really, everyone's doing the same workout here. So whether you're already Rx scaled, masters, teens, it doesn't matter. This is the place for you. If you are a CrossFit masters athlete specifically, stick around to the end of this video because I have something really, really cool for you. Uh, here at Wad Prep, we're trying to change the game when it comes to master specific coaching. So if you're over the age of 35, stick around to the end of the video. I have some really cool stuff to share with you. And before getting into the nitty gritty, as usual, we are releasing a complete strategy guide. We call it the ultimate strategy guide to each CrossFit Open workout. And you can get that by clicking the link below or just going to wadprep.com and signing up for our free open strategy guides. Basically, we create this video and then we create a whole bunch of other content to help you get your best score possible. And we'll deliver it directly to your email inbox, totally free, along with some special content that only people on our email list get. So go sign up for that now. And again, just go to wadprep.com to grab it. So really quick, just to make sure you don't do this workout improperly, go to games.crossfit.com and check out the movement standards. Here's the workout, but remember, the standards do change depending on which division you're in. Some divisions you have to jump over the bar with both feet during the burpees. Some divisions you can step over the bar. I'm not going to go into that. You have to do your research. Go to games.crossfit.com. And also remember that WAD prep is not associated in any way, shape, or form with CrossFit HQ. So now that we have that figured out, let's get moving. So let's talk about the overall strategy for this workout. Shocker, the first workout of the 2020 CrossFit Open is going to burn. They pretty much all burn, but this one especially, you saw Rich Froning's reaction if you watch the live announcement. He's like, just grip it and rip it. This one's gonna hurt. And it did hurt, and it's gonna hurt for you, and it's gonna hurt for me. But one thing I want a lot of people to understand, the mindset going into this is not to finish, finish sub 10 minutes. That's what the ultra elite will be able to do. You will not probably, if you're watching this video, no offense, neither will I, you're probably not gonna finish under 10 minutes. In fact, I'm calling it right now, a lot of people will not finish this workout because they don't pace properly. We did a little math, hopefully our math is correct, but you need to do roughly one round every 90 seconds to finish this workout. A lot of people's goals should be just to finish this workout underneath the cap. Uh, that cap is 15 minutes. So if you're trying to finish the workout, make sure that each round hangs around that 90 second or less mark. Obviously you need to leave a little bit of buffer. So in the beginning, if you're not hitting 90 seconds, you're probably not gonna finish the workout. But if you come out of the gate too fast, which is a very common problem, and that leads me to my next point, don't burn out too fast. I'm gonna say it and 85% of the people watching this video, probably including myself, will come out of the gate way, 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 way too fast. Your goal going into this workout, before we get into the nitty gritty of, of the burpees and the, maybe the snatches or the clean and jerks, your goal for this workout is to make round one look the same as round two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then and only then, Rounds nine and 10, that's when it's time to put the pedal to the metal and really, really burn it out. That's when you should really start feeling the hurt and you should dig deep and go into that super dark place, again, if you're trying to get your best score possible. So let's get started with the ground to overhead. You have to do eight each round. A lot of people saw the announcement and they're like, oh, snatches, easy, all day long. Not so fast. I am gonna teach you how to do the most efficient snatches but we're also going to dig into clean and jerks because I think an overwhelming majority of the people hitting this workout, especially in the RX division, where the weight will get heavy towards the end, I think a nice, smooth, and efficient ground to overhead will be a great option for you. So just because the guys on TV did it one way, AKA power snatches, doesn't mean that's necessarily right for you. So let's talk about a couple of the intricacies of the snatch. If you're going to do snatches, I highly suggest the snatch weight needs to be very easy for you. You should not drop the barbell. Like ultimately that's the goal. I don't wanna see you drop the barbell. So if you have to do, if you do snatches and it causes you to need to drop and reset and then pick up the bar again, you'd probably would have been better off just going unbroken with the clean and jerks. So again, if you can stay unbroken, snatches are the way to go. 
They're quicker, they're more efficient, it's less time under tension. But if you feel the need to drop the bar, then going unbroken with something like the clean and jerk could probably be a little bit more manageable. It might take a little bit longer, but ultimately you won't have any breaks, which will then make you faster. So when it comes to the snatch, there's a few things that we need to talk about. The first one I wanna talk about is your foot positioning. So you might have noticed that Scott Panchik had nice wide feet. This is actually what I'm suggesting, especially if you can move this rate weight really easily. So here are a few different demonstrations. First, I'm gonna show you what I call just a normal power snatch. So my feet start in my jumping position, I snatch, I jump, I land, and then I stand the weight up. So you can see my feet are kind of moving in and out with each rep. It's not too inefficient, but you can see my feet are kind of doing a bit of a, of a, of a dance there. They're going out, they're going in, they're going out, they're going in, along with that barbell moving up and down. Where this can go wrong is if you start having to really spread your feet. I call this the starfish. So the starfish snatch uh, is when your feet go really, really wide. Yeah, it's a great power snatch. No, that's wrong. It's not a great power snatch in any way, shape or form. Don't do it because what happens is you spend so much time standing up the weight and recollecting yourself before the next rep. If you start to default to this kind of power snatch, I highly suggest moving on to a clean and jerk. But if you can, this is the way that I'm going to try to do this workout. Have your feet slightly wider than your shoulders and do not move them. You can see here in this video, I'm cycling the barbell and all I'm doing is I'm kind of jumping up and down, but my feet aren't moving in, they're not moving out. My feet actually don't move the ground. This is probably the best way to do the power snatches when it comes to the feet. Now, let's actually talk about our hands a little bit. I think the perfect combination here is to have a slightly narrower, narrower, that's very difficult for me to say, a slightly narrower rrr, rrr, grip than uh, your normal snatch. So my normal snatch, I usually go to the outside of the knurling marks, but for this particular lift, since it's so light, you might've noticed, the, the guys did it on video tonight, uh, but they bumped their hands in just a little bit and they were actually able to bounce the barbell off their thighs. So you can see here in this video, when I move my hands in, the barbell is making contact lower on my body. Is it the most efficient way to move a lot of weight? No, but it actually is a really easy way to cycle lightweight. So what's cool is that as you go through the workout, you can actually play around with your grip. You can go wide for one round, you can go narrow for the next. You can really play around with it. And what's cool is that each time you do the snatch with that either really narrow grip, really wide grip somewhere in between, each time you do it, you're gonna feel a little bit of freshness. So let's talk about dropping the bar. If you happen to drop the bar, remember I said I don't want you to drop the bar, but if you happen to drop the bar from overhead, maybe you need to break up your snatches, uh, or maybe you drop the bar and need to head into the burpees. No matter what you do, when you drop the bar, be sure to do what I call a good drop. A good drop is a nice controlled drop to the floor. I might even settle the barbell with my hands. You can notice the bar doesn't bounce around. It doesn't roll around. When you compare this to what I call a bad drop, that's where I throw the barbell like a projectile. It bounces, it slides across the gym. Uh, it might roll into uh, uh, a mirror and break the mirror. I've seen all kinds of bad stuff happen. Just control the barbell. That's the lesson here, especially because there's so many transitions, well, which we'll get into in a second. But because there's so many transitions, it's very important that the barbell never gets away from you. So let's say, maybe the snatch is a little heavy for you. You're like, hey, I can maybe do eight reps in a row fresh, but I don't think it's right for me. Use your judgment, see how you feel, do some practice reps, but if you need to do clean and jerks, there's a few really important tips that I'm gonna talk about. So with the clean and jerk, there's a good version and a bad version. The good version of the clean and jerk, or the, the ground to overhead here, is I'm bringing the bar to my shoulder, and then I'm immediately, after I catch it on my shoulders, I'm using that partial dip to go directly overhead. So this is a power clean and jerk, one fluid smooth motion, and you can see me doing a couple reps here. You'll notice that I catch the barbell on my shoulders, and then when I'm in that dip, I drive up and jerk the barbell overhead. It's smooth, it's efficient, and it allows me to move the bar pretty quickly and really not that much slower than a snatch. Where people go wrong with the clean and jerk is when they pause. So I see this all the time, especially with beginner lifters, is they'll pull the bar to their shoulders, they catch it in a power clean, and then they stand up and they're like, all right, what's next? 
okay, now I'm going to go overhead, and then they go overhead. And what happens is when you break it into two distinct movements, it slows you down so much, and you have the weight of that barbell weighing on you the entire time. So you're, you're holding the barbell longer, and the weight is, is literally like resting on your shoulders and preventing you from recovering for a longer period of time. It's a lose-lose scenario. So unless this weight is hard for you, unless you're like actually to the point of possible failure when jerking it overhead, don't take too much time. Don't waste any time with the bar on your shoulders. Get it immediately overhead. Another area where you could really, really go wrong here is if you forget to use your legs to drive the barbell overhead. So that could look like you do the power clean, you stand up, and then you do a strict press because maybe this bar is really light for you and you can just muscle it over your head. Sure, the first couple rounds, you might feel great, but unfortunately, when we combine with the press of that burpee, you're screwed. That's all, like, that, that's all there is to it. If, you, if you're strict pressing that bar overhead and then you think you're gonna be able to do burpees really efficiently and be able to continue to strict press the entire time, it's just not gonna happen. So remember, the moral of the story here, use your legs, don't strict press the bar overhead. Make sure that you do a jerk like we showed earlier. So another thing, regardless of whether you're doing snatches or you're doing ground to overhead, tape your thumbs. If you don't hook grip and you never have, shame on you. Give me 15 burpees right now because you need to. Every Olympic lifter in the history of the Olympics does a hook grip, okay? So there's no debate. Use a hook grip, and one thing that's gonna make the hook grip a lot easier is by taping your thumbs. We actually have a video here on YouTube. Just type in thumb tape wad prep, maybe. I think you'd probably find it there. But I have a video that just shows you really easily how to tape your thumbs and use the hook grip on the bar. For the bar facing burpees, these are going to crush people. And here's the main issue that's going to happen. When you do your first 10 burpees, you're going to feel like a million bucks. And then your second set of 10, you're going to feel like maybe 500,000 bucks. And then for the third set of 10, you'll be probably down to like 250. And then it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse. And the reason is you're probably coming out too fast. So common problem, biggest problem I ever see with bar facing burpees or any burpees for that matter is this. And that is the turbo burpee. It's where you, you feel invincible. You're going as fast as possible. You're like, I'm gonna probably beat Rich Froning in this workout and Scott Panchik. It's just not gonna happen. So moral of the story, go slower on the burpees, especially in the beginning, than your mind wants you to. You need to take maybe a couple notches down, you need to tone it down just a little bit and have a very methodical approach to the burpees. So when you're doing the burpees, there's a few different versions that I suggest. Number one, we have the step down and step up burpee. This is very common. I think it's a little slow, but if you really, really get tired, this can be a great way to, to find a nice smooth rhythm. So you can see here, I just step down with one foot, hit my chest, step up, jump over the bar. It's very, very simple. The next version I'm going to suggest, this is my personal favorite because it just gets you to the floor faster. That's called the splat down and step up. So some call it the jump down, but that's not nearly cool enough. I'm calling it the splat down. So we jump down to the ground or splat down to the ground without even controlling our arms very much. Splat down to the ground, step up and jump over the bar. It's very simple. What we're doing is we're minimizing the amount of time it takes us to get to the ground because honestly, getting to the ground isn't that complicated. So drop straight down to the bottom and then step up and jump over the bar. If you want to make this even more efficient, this is personally how I will be doing all of the burpees. Try adding a turn as you step up. So you can see I splat down, I step up, and as I'm stepping up, I'm turning and then I jump and continue turning over the bar. So that means I don't have to jump, land, and then turn on the ground. I'm actually turning in the process of jumping over the bar. As long as you remember to jump and land with both feet, you'll be good to go. And I think this is the most efficient and the smoothest burpee out there. So two other burpee problems that a lot of us will run into. We talked about turbo burpees or when we're going just way, way too fast. Another thing that I see, and I hate it with, all, with every fiber of my soul, is the prancing burpee. If you're in the RX division specifically, don't prance over the bar. You're not, one, you're not allowed to, and two, you just look ridiculous. So this is me prancing over the bar. This is where um, I'm trying to jump with two feet, but it's really, I'm, I'm doing some sort of prance. That's what I'm doing. I'm jumping like a fairy over the bar, and it's illegal. You're not allowed to do it. I see people get away with it all the time, but it is a no rep. Don't do it. One really quick thing, I, I just, I talked about prancing and how much I hated it. 
Um, but if you are in the scale division, from what I understand, uh, some of the master's scale divisions, you are allowed to step up and over the bar. And that is perfectly fine and perfectly acceptable. I would be honored if I'm 60 years old and can even get up off the ground. So I'm not hating any of the master's division or the scale division when I talk about prancing. I'm saying if you say you're doing it RX, make sure you don't prance. But if you're in the scale division or, or any of the divisions that allow you to step up and over the bar, that could be a perfectly good way to do the burpee and that's perfectly acceptable. And then the third thing, uh, the third issue that a lot of people run into, this is especially true for a lot of beginner CrossFitters. And for whatever reason, I see a lot of women doing this, is the strict burpee. The strict burpee is when I jump down to the ground, I'm in that front lean and rest push-up position, and I'm actually doing a strict push-up and then into a burpee. Most people, when they're beginners with the burpees, that's what they do. They do some sort of strict press, and frankly, you're just fatiguing yourself. So don't waste any time getting to the ground. Don't do your push-up strict. Instead, just think about splat. You splat your chest to the ground. Make sure you don't knock the wind out of your chest, but really you'd be surprised how quickly you can get to the ground without wasting all of that energy with your arms. And that is something you need to watch out for when you're doing the burpees. Another thing that I wanna mention about the burpees is if as long as you're good at controlling the barbell and not letting that slide around, I always like to mark my hands on the ground. So what I do is I find a position where my hands are perfectly positioned for the burpee, my head's not gonna hit the bar, and I literally will mark my hand placement on both sides of the bar. As long as I keep putting the bar down in relatively the same exact spot, if it's in the same place every time, it's really nice to be able to look down and see the targets for your hands. It makes your burpee more efficient. It makes it so that you're not like five feet away from the bar every single burpee that you do because you're paranoid to hit your head on the bar. So keep the bar stationary, mark your hand placement. As long as that bar doesn't move around, you will be good to go and it's gonna make your burpees more efficient. This is a simple workout, but it's really deceiving. If you focus on the intricacies of each movement, think about your transitions from your burpees to the barbell and the barbell back to the burpees. If you eliminate all of the time, in fact, here's an example video for you. Here's an example of a good transition where I put the bar down, I take a deep breath or two, and then I'm right into the burpees. And then here's what a lot of people will do, maybe probably including myself. This is where I put the bar down and then I contemplate life. I think about my childhood choices. I think about uh, what my wife said to me last week and whether I liked it or not. And then I might even sit on the floor. Okay, there's so many transitions in this workout. If you're undisciplined with the time it takes between g moving from one rep, so the ground to overhead, to the next movement, which is the bar facing burpees. If you're not disciplined with that transition, then all of these tips go completely to waste. You have to make sure you're disciplined with your transitions. And that's why I said earlier, try to be a robot here. Put that bar down, take a couple breaths and go right into the burpees. Get on the floor as quickly as possible and then get your butt off the floor as quickly as possible. All right, I really hope that you like this video. If you follow these steps, you will get your best score possible on 20.1. Really quick, if you haven't yet, be sure to go to wadprep.com and sign up for our free strategy guides. Every Friday, I send a complete strategy guide for each CrossFit Open workout. But if you're a master's athlete, we need to talk. The master's division has been completely marginalized by pretty much everyone. I'm not gonna call out any names, but all I'm saying is that I was at the CrossFit Games this year. I was actually wearing this shirt, cheering on one of our athletes. Um, you can see his name's on the back. Uh, David Hardy is one of our athletes here at Wild Prep. He's, he's on our one-on-one -on -one coaching team. And uh, he made it to the games and I was there cheering everyone on. And when I was there cheering on the Masters Division, I noticed one thing. There wasn't any media coverage there was no one live broadcasting, which I ended up doing uh, very poorly, but I did it anyway on my Facebook page. And there just frankly was marginalization. In fact, Greg Glassman went as far as to say that the CrossFit Masters division doesn't inspire anyone, uh, which that was a bit cringeworthy, but I still love Greg. But the moral of the story here is that the Masters division has been marginalized. If you're a Masters athlete and you want coaching, if you're a Masters athlete that wants a team of coaches to pay attention to you, help you with your strategy going into each CrossFit Open workout, help analyze videos of all the hardest movements in your, in your CrossFit uh, arsenal. If you want to be able to ask 
a professional coach anything at any time, then I'm inviting you to join Wad Prep Plus. It's a brand new community that we've started here at Wad Prep. We're what we're doing is I'm taking the best coaches we have on our team and I'm literally making a place for CrossFit Masters athletes to connect with those coaches. So if you want to join an incredible community, it's only for Masters athletes. If you join bet before Friday night, I don't know, depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be passed. But if you join before Friday night, you can actually get uh, our founders pricing and your price for Wad Pro Plus will never, ever go up. If you want details about all the amazing things, including the fact that as soon as the open workout is announced, all of the Wad Prep coaches go live inside of Wad Prep Plus and literally answer everyone's questions. So you don't even have to wait for this video. You can go into the group, get on the Facebook Live, talk to our best five or six coaches at the, on the Wad Prep team and ask them anything you want. It's incredible and it's a really low price, but if you want to learn more about it, Look in the description below or click the link in the first comment. I pinned it there for you. Check out Wad Prep Plus. Again, if you're a master's athlete, this is the coolest thing uh, we've done in, in Wad Prep, and it's one of the coolest things going for the entire master's community. And I hope that we can serve you so that you can become one of Wad Prep's fittest. So with that, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you think I look weird, thumbs down. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell because we have way more content coming out on YouTube for the CrossFit Open. You don't even realize. I'm about to go shoot another video right now that's gonna help you recover for 20.1. So if you don't wanna miss all that, hit all the buttons, make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you next week. Peace.